Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new, welcome. My name is Dr. Ray. I'm a small animal general practitioner. You found yourself on my channel. You're probably thinking to yourself, I need to make a food change. I, you know, I want to know what's best nutritionally for my pet. And so you found yourself here and you have found yourself in the middle of our Farmina series. We've been going through every single one of the Farmina foods, dog foods so far, and um, scoring them against the pet food scoring system, a system that I came up with to keep, um, keep me focused and help keep you guys focused. There is so much information out there about pet food, what's right, what's wrong, and um, it's all good information to take in, but we need to put, in my opinion, emphasis on what is truly important about nutrition, and that is the nutrients. And so that's what the pet food scoring system is gonna help us do. We're gonna pick through the marketing, we're gonna focus on the nutrition, the nutritional aspect of the food, and then um, in the end, we're gonna compare them all to each other, and uh, yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing. If you wanna check out some of the earlier videos in the Farmina Fun, um, series here you can check out that playlist so just go to the playlist and you can find Farmina um, you can find playlists on foods that score well on the pet food scoring system you can find foods that scored lower on the pet food scoring system cats dogs puppies seniors um, some frequently asked questions things that you need to know as you're um, embarking upon your nutrition journey in the foundationals uh, video playlist and so all those fun things are there for you and I hope that you will like and subscribe and join us so Today, where we are at is the prime. Now there's not, as I was looking through, and there's not that many in the prime category. So I may, I may combine the prime with others depending on um, how long this video is. But my plan is just to speed through. So we're gonna be using this chart. This is the chart that we have been using. I've been color coding them. Top is the uh, main ingredient. Then you've got your K cows, life stage, was it feeding child, spoiler alert. I have not come across any of the Farmina um, ones so far that have been feeding child. So that's probably gonna be a no across the board. Um, grain free, raw, what is the protein, fat, fiber, calcium, and phosphorus? for us and then the overall score all their foods have been so far a nine percent moisture level normally we do things on a dry matter basis but for um, ease and flow and because this has become a very complex uh, evaluation with many many bags I'm just using what's available on the website um, just for practicality purposes but if you find a food you know amongst this review review so to speak it's not really a view it's just it's not a review it is a um it is more about the process. And so if, as we're going through this process, you find a food that you're particularly interested in, I do urge you to contact the company. They have this wonderful chat function that I've used in the past and get it on a dry matter basis so that you can um, rerun the pet food scoring system and just kind of make sure um, that it fits your and your pet's needs. All right, starting out at the top, if you wanna come and follow us, it's farmina.com and we are doing the prime, the prime line. Now what is, the prime line, let's see. Okay, so the prime line is a nutrition system for carnivores, scientifically designed according to nature. Um, I have a video talking about my um, feelings and thoughts on our dogs carnivores in the sense that Farmina is, you know, um, claiming or, or, or going based on that theory. Um, and you can watch that video and see your thoughts are. I also touch on it a little bit in the tropical line video. Um, I'm not going to get into that in this video. However, I will say this. Scientifically designed according to nature. Nature can be very harsh and very cruel, okay? Nature is, um, in many species, not the best and not aimed at the longest longevity you know, outcome. And so in nature, um, if your dog gets a really bad urinary tract infection, it's going to die. But if we take modern science and we give that dog antibiotics, it's, it's gonna recover, you know, a UTI. I mean, but in the wild, yes, that animal may very well die of that urinary tract infection, goes up into the kidneys, that dog is dead, okay? Nature is not kind. And so I understand what they're doing. Um, they're animals, they're in nature, natural, which natural is best, and, and I, I, get, I get that. However, we can take things that are natural and accept that with modern science, we can make things better. 
um, and we can fine tune things and we can fine, um, you know, tweak things just a little bit and make things better than nature. I right? do it all the time. Um, your dog breaks its leg, comes into my office. I put, um, you know, I put a plate in its leg or I put some screws in its leg. Those are not natural. You know, your dog now has essentially a bionic leg, but it's better. Mother nature was not kind. Um, and so, you know, just, just kind of, I understand it, take it with a grain of salt, but don't get fixated in, I can only, only, only do things that are absolutely natural because um, there, we can be responsible with our application of science um, and produce a longer, better life for our pets. And so that's just my take on that. Um, years of cruelty-free research in cooperation with the Chair of Animal Nutrition of the University of Naples. Um, and that led the Farmina research team to develop uh, the nutrient systems focused on carnivore nature of our four-legged four -legged family. And that is highlighted in the NND prime. So 98% of um, the proteins are high bio biological value animal proteins and they do not use cereal. So this is going to be um, a grain-free diet. And so unfortunately we know they are already going to lose a point there. They're made without um, GMO, so no, no genetically modified ingredients. Um, natural antioxidants, um, packaged in a protective atmosphere, rich in high quality life essentials, including precious vitamins, which have a longer efficacy thanks to the cold fusion technology. I'm not familiar with cold fusion technology, um, but I'm sure there are, uh, it, there's an informational page on this website. If that's something that interests you and is important to you, that you can definitely investigate that a little bit further. Um, the grain, the no grains thing, um, should you be feeding a food that is grain free? Should you not? Um, there's drama circulating a, a, about that. Um, this is the reality of the situation. Okay. All the drama aside, all this, all that from a veterinarian standpoint, because when a client comes into my office, I want two things. I want the animal to be healthy and I want the owner to leave happy. Okay. That's my job. And I like to be good at my job. And so I don't want to do anything that would compromise either of those. Bottom line, um, you know, I don't have, I'm not sponsored. Um, I don't get money for giving these, you know, comments or, you know, anything like that. Um, if a video is sponsored or it is a paid promotion, I will let you know. And I will only do those things if it's a product that I think is good. So I would never take money from a company and then um, not like the product or lie about it. That, that That's not going to happen on this channel. Um, so, you know, I want the client to be happy. I want the pet to be healthy. And so when I tell you there's no known documented benefit to feeding a pet grain-free, um, and there may be some research out there that is still being worked through and it may take 10 or 20 years to get, you know, get that research tightened up. There's some research that says feeding a grain free food could damage your pet. There is no reason to do it. Okay. There is no reason to do it. And so when a, when cardiologists who have more education than me, and they're not getting paid by pet food companies either, um, and they're not receiving kickbacks, they've dedicated their life to pet cardiology, um, they could care less about food or recommending food. That's not in their lane at all. If you think the general practitioner doesn't want to talk about food, your cardiologist doesn't want to talk about food either, okay? They're at another level. Um, they're saying, don't do it. Don't feed, don't feed grain-free. I'm sorry, I have to pass that information along. And so that's where I'm coming from. And so if you, you know, if you want to know why we're saying that as veterinarians, it's not because, um, you know, we're dunces and we read some research that may be skewed or um, we're getting paid by pet food companies to say that or it's some major, cons you know, big conspiracy. It is not, okay? It is not. We simply want to do what is best for your pet and we want you to be happy at the end of the day. And so that is why we do that. We believe, truly believe that um, avoiding grain-free at this point in time, and it may change in five years, it may change in 10 years, it may change in 20 years, you know, we will amend that recommendation. But for right now, um, you know, that, that's an issue. And so this food, unfortunately, is already going to be starting with a handicap of negative one um, because of that. But we'll still see. In the end, it may, it may still score, you know, it may still score well. Um, but you got to be on it. You know, if you're going to feed a grain-free food, you know, and you got to take that dog into the vet, 
you know, every six months to a year and you got to get it auscultated and, you know, you might need to throw some ECGs in there every once in a while. I mean, you really need to do, you really need to do your part if you're going to live out on the fringes of this, of this, this trend, this fad, okay? All right, so let's get into the actual line here. I know I said this was going to be quick and we weren't going to um, have too much commentary, but there's always something to comment about. Okay, across the top is going to be the bags. We're going to fill those in later. This is the N and D line. And here we go. We're going to start out with their puppy, their puppy version. So the main ingredient on this is going to be chicken. They did have grain inclusive chicken and pomegranate. And so at the end when we do our mega go over everything, excuse me, in the end when we do our big mega, we're going to go over everything, everything, everything. We'll see how the, you know, see what the difference is nutritionally and if that grain free really makes a difference or not. Maybe you'll think twice about it. Um, so chicken is the main, the main ingredient here, um, including the growth. It's formulated to meet the nutrition levels um, established by AFCO for all life stages, including the growth of large sized dogs. So this is a large breed puppy. Um, again, incorrect lifestyle because it's saying this is a mini. So they lose that point there. And that has been the case for whatever reason Farmina has chosen to formulate all their puppies to be large breed puppy. Don't know why that is. Um, that just appears to be the case. So large breed puppy, they're gonna lose a point there. Feeding trials, no it was not, it was formulated. Grain free, yes, so they're gonna lose a point there. But it's not raw and that makes me happy. Picture of the package, you got the chicken and the pomegranate. We already went through kind of their call outs there. Um, chicken, dehydrated chicken, sweet potatoes, chicken fat. We've got some eggs. Eggs are actually a really nice protein, a nice protein source. Herring, another protein soy source, dehydrated herring, herring oil, pea fiber. And again, we've got the pea fiber. That is part of that whole um, concern is that the pulses, so legumes, peas, etc., the ingredients in that class are inhibiting the absorption and proper utilization of taurine, which is an amino acid. Um, and the cat is essential and the dog, it can actually be synthesized. Um, so it's, it's interrupting that process and um, it is through that process causing deficiencies that affect the heart and um, result in heart disease, specifically dilated cardiomyopathy. So that's, that's the reason for that. Then they got the dried carrots and they've got, you know, some chicken cartilage in there. They've got other ingredients and you can peruse through the pomegranate is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 down. So I mean like how much pomegranate um, is really in there? The world may never know. Vitamin E, very nice, 600. It's been lower than some of the other lines. Tropical line was a, little, a lot lower, so I like that vitamin E at 600. That makes me happy. And now we get into the ingredients. So this is a puppy food, so we do need to bring up our puppy profiles here. Protein at 32. Fat at 22. Fiber, 2.3. Calcium. 1.1 phosphorus 0.91 and we will get into the overall score in a minute resting energy 453 let's pull up the feeding guide here and see if it's correct i like to take 20 pounds um four months is 1.5 up to 1.6 we need a 363 times two, so we need about 726 calories. 726 calories, 453 times 1.6. Yep, that's pretty, pretty good. Yes, much better. This is much better. So previous feeding guides for puppy for whatever reason have been off. They seem to have corrected that in the prime, the prime line. So I'm happy about that. So they're actually going to get the point for that. Yay. So it may still end up being a, a good overall score. Um, so let's score it out. One, two, nope, nope, they lost it on the life, nope, they're losing it on the life stage, they're losing it on the feeding trial, losing it on grain free. So one, two, pull up our puppy standards. Three, protein is good. Four, fat is good. 
fiber is always good, so that's uh, 5, calcium at 1.1, 6, phosphorus, 7. So it's going to be up here in the 7 out of 10. The major deductions being the incorrect life stage, the not being feeding child, and being grain free. So three deductions there, bringing that to a 7 out of 10. All right, so now you know how, if you're new here, how how this is going to go down. All right, so that was a chicken and pomegranate puppy mini. Then we've got the chicken and pomegranate puppy maxi. It's going to be exactly the same, but just a different kibble size. Now we're going to move on to the adult. So it's going to be a different set of standards that we're going to apply to this because we want the nutritional requirements for the adult. So that's going to look like this. So again, um, formulated, uh, but it is formulated for an adult, so good there. We know that it's grain-free because they already stated that. It's not raw. Let's peruse the ingredient list really quick. Okay, so it's there for everybody to see, very similar to the puppy. Got our vitamin E again up there at 600. We like that. We ideally want that between four, you know, above four to 500 for that real good antioxidant effect. So we are going to be over on the protein. Um, we would actually like the protein to be a little bit lower, so we're going to lose a point there. Um, a, bit, a bit more than what the average adult dog needs to be optimal. So when you, you know, exceed that, is it guarantee your pet's going to have a problem? No, it doesn't. Um, but in general, statistically, most dogs perform the best when the protein's between 15 and 30, so they're going to lose a point there. Fat at 18 is going to be fine. Fiber at 2.6 is going to be fine. Calcium at one is going to be fine because that is, is at the upper level, but when you account for the dry matter um, conversion, it's still gonna be okay, and the phosphorus is still gonna be okay. So you can see, because they're utilizing you know that prime, that need is magic in this particular line, trying to appeal to those particular people, um, they're losing some extra points. In my opinion, there was really no reason to create this line. The reason why they most likely did it is to reach, you know good business model, reach more people, sell more food, um, give the people what they want. Same thing I do, you know, I wanna, I wanna make you happy, they wanna make you happy, they want you to buy their food, so they're trying to appeal to those people that want the no grains, you know, and, and you know, dogs are carnivore situation. All right, so 432 on that, so that's gonna be good, so let's count up the points. One, two, miss it on the feeding trial, one deduction, miss it on the grain-free, another deduction, um, so two deductions there. 7 out of 10. So 7's across the board right now. Uh, that was the chicken. The next one is going to be the medium maxi, skipping that. And then we're going to get into the boar. They had another formula that was pork. I'm not sure what the difference um, is. We'll look on the ingredient list. Um, pork versus boar. This is the boar and apple adult formula. Wild boar and apple recipe is formulated to meet the nutritional levels established by AFCO Dog Profiles for maintenance. Grain-free, not raw. Wild boar, number number one ingredient. So, you know, they are distinguishing that this is wild boar and not pork. So, for whatever that's worth, <laughs> not sure. Um, wild boar, dehydrated boar, sweet potato, chicken, you go through, and you can see pretty much the same. You got the pea fiber, um, and then they do have that dried apple in there. Vitamin E is nicely up there at 600. And let's go through this. So again, protein's gonna be a bit more than we like at 34. Fat at 18. Fiber, 2.6. Calcium, one. Phosphorus, 0 0.8. K-Cal's 432. So very, actually it's the exact same nutrient profile as the chicken, and I believe if I saw on the ingredient list, they did add chicken fat. Yeah, they add, they add both dehydrated chicken and chicken fat in here. So my my guess is, um, and I don't I don't know, but they've had to add the chicken and the dehydrated chicken most likely to bring um, the protein level up. And so again, the ingredient list is based on weight, not volume used to achieve the final numbers, right? So the final protein number is 34. They're not telling you this is 98% of the proteins are animal proteins, but they're not telling you how much is actually wild boar and how much is dehydrated chicken. Now, 
I noticed in this AFCO statement, um, it's using the word recipe and word recipe has a meaning and we have a video on interpreting all those meanings but the word recipe means that that amount that is wild boar in apple i believe means that it is 25 percent all right so scoring them seven out of ten next lamb next is the lamb lamb and blueberry recipe is formulated for adults the adult here no feeding trial Yes, grain free. No, not raw. Ingredients lamb, dehydrated lamb. Got some herring in there too. Got some chicken fat. Mixing a bunch of stuff together. So don't falsely assume that this is all lamb. There are other things in there. 600 on the vitamin E makes us happy. And again, sticking with the nutrient profile 34%. Protein, fat at 18. Fiber, 2.6. Calcium, one phosphorus 0 0.8 overall score is a seven out of ten and that is the last the last one on the prime prime series here so let's just discuss briefly what we have learned here today um not my favorite of the line there are definitely other you know, one of their other categories that scored better as far as my pet food scoring system, right? Um, ultimately, you and your vet, in your conversation, your personal conversation with your vet, surplants any information that I'm giving you. But for me, the, bi the big thing, the grain freeze, was a really big deduction here. And to me, is, is very important. And I also uh, do not like the fact that this protein is a little bit excessive. If it was a grain inclusive and it had that little bit of higher protein, I would have been a lot, a lot happier. Um, I recommend all my patients get blood work every year. And so there's a good chance that if you're feeding, you know, protein levels that are high, we're going to pick up on something, you know, as long as, as long as you consent to the blood work yearly. Um, but, but the, the, the heart thing, um, you know, I may not be able to hear that problem until it is significantly too late. And I just, it's just, it's just a big risk for me. And it, it, it's a no for me. I think that there are other ones that you can, you could feed on this line and be okay. Or feed in this brand. And if you like the Farmina brand and be okay. So I'm, you know, I'm not super enamored by this, but you know, they can't all be winners. And so, um, it's not, it's not a bad food. Still, you know, score is pretty good. Seven out of 10. So it's still going to be in that seven out of 10 playlist. Um, but you know, when we, when we do our total evaluation, um, I just have a feeling it's just it's it's not going to be our favorite, right? It's not going to be our favorite. Let's let's add the white and the brown to this review because um, it's a shorter one, and the next one, which is the pumpkin, is going to be a really long one. So let's go ahead and jump over while while we're at it. So the white is, I guess, for white dogs. Um, let's see what it says about the white here. The NMD brown and white formula is a soft and shiny coat. That's why they formulated the new Farmina NMD white and brown series, an exclusive color protection formula. Reduces the risk of staining or, or fading your pet's fur. They are specifically designed to cater to the needs of dogs with different coat colors and textures so that you can be assured your furry friend is getting the right nutrition based on their specific needs. It says that their sourcing high quality ingredients ensures that pets receive the optimal nutrient content necessary to reduce the risk of depigmentation in dark coats and minimize the risk of pigmentation issues in white coats. With balanced nutrients, your pet will not only look healthier, but will also feel better too. I think that's true across the board. I don't think that that has anything to do, your pet, if you're feeding a pet a nutritious food, um, the coat will always look healthier and happier. So I'm not sure um, what, what would make that the case? I can try to ask in, in the chat. So we may, we may jump in there and see what, um, you know, what is the special blend or, you know, is there a special ingredient that does that specifically? Um, it says here that the white line reduces the staining in coats. Our single animal protein recipe provides limited levels of phenylalanine and tyrosine, limited copper content and omega-3 fatty acids to improve the overall health. Um, it's ideal for white 
coat breeds such as West Highland Terriers, Maltese Pomeranians, Poodles, Bull Terriers, or small white coated dogs. So I would be very interested in knowing because um, if you're feeding the white formula and you have a white dog, let us know if it actually works because I think the tear staining and the lick staining in those breeds is really unsightly and it is really difficult to um, to not happen. And so it's a natural process. Um, the enzymes and natural enzymes in your pet's tears and saliva interacts with the white colored coat and causes a chemical reaction and that results in the dark color. If your dog has a secondary issue, like they have um, an eye issue where their eyes are constantly watering, maybe your pet has a glaucoma or your pet has, um, you know, any condition that uveitis, whatever it is, and they tear more, you're gonna get more of that discoloration. Same thing if your pet has allergies and they're licking their feet more, you're gonna get a darker color stain. Um, and so there are, I have heard of um, companies and brands um, of supplements that can be used to decrease and change like the pH level and things like that, a chemical reaction, if you will, stop that chemical reaction from occurring. And so that may be part of this limited levels of phenylalanine and tyrosine in the limited copper content, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're feeding this food and you like clinically can um, help the nutrition nation and know that this does actually make that tear staining and lick staining less, let us know. So that would be interesting. That I don't know that they have any studies showing that, but I will, because I do have a big, you know, the big thing is their science and they have their own research team. I will try to get um, information in the chat if that is something they've clinically done. That would be really easy, right, to determine. That would be a really easy study. On the NND Brown, um, this new product line reduces the risk of discoloring of dark coats. I'm not sure what the discoloring of dark coats Maybe it is the same thing, phenylalanine, tyrosine, copper. Um, ideal for any brown breeds such as Chihuahua, uh, Schnauzer, French Bulldog, Pinscher Poodle, and small brown coated dogs. I do not know what they mean by discoloration um, of dark coats. Someone will have to let me know. I'm not really sure. That's not really been on on my radar. 96% um, of proteins of animal origin, no preservatives. These are grain-free diets, so they're gonna have a deduction there, um, just like the rest in this line. So I guess it's fitting that we do it now, and G um, no GMOs. All right. So we're just gonna put here ND White as the first one. So there's only one in the line. Sea bass, kelp, and fennel. That's interesting. Complete food for adult dogs. It's not the AFCO statement like we like to see it, but it does say it's for an adult. We're going to assume that it's not feeding child use. They don't specifically um, say that it is, but again, I'm going to try to get in the chat and ask them about that. Uh, grain free. Yes, they said it was grain free. It is not raw. Sea bass, dehydrated sea bass, got some fish oil, hydrolyzed fish protein, the kelp. Vitamin E up there at 600, we always like to see that. Let's get into the nutrients. So that's a lower protein, 23% protein, 18% fat, fiber, 2.9, a little bit higher fiber than the rest there. Calcium, 0 0.9, which we're happy about that. Phosphorus is 0 0.8, so we're happy about that. KCAL's 414, so that's going to be good as long as the feeding guide is about the same. They're suggesting a big range, 0 0.85 to 1.6 cups. That's a huge range. That should be fine, so we're gonna give them a point there. So let's calculate it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? Yes, because the protein is actually better on this one than the, than the prime line. All right, let's see the brown. It's a lamb based formula. So the NND white was fish. This is kind of a lamb based. Now this is interesting. Let's fill this in. It is for adults. Feeding trial, no it was not. Grain free, yes it is. It is not raw. When we get down to the ingredient list, it's actually listing I love this. It is actually listing the percent. Not saying, not saying what the percentage is, and maybe again we can get into customer service and find out what those percents are. Um, is it percent dry matter? Is it per percent um, volume? Is it percent by weight? Very interesting. So 26% lamb, 25% um, dehydrated lamb protein. The kelp is 5%, the dried carrot is 2.5%. That is very interesting, and I don't know why they chose to do that on this particular one. 
Um, so that I, I'm going to ask customer service that as well. Vitamin E, 600 nutrients. It's back up at that 34%. Um, so over on the protein. Fat at 18 is going to be good. Fiber, a little bit higher than we've seen, 3.3. Calcium, a 1.1 is going to be over. They're going to lose it there. And 0 0.8. All of these are 9% um, 9 9 moisture. Um, and 424. Yep, same. So I'm going to point there. Um, what did that add up to? They lost the point there, so this is going to bump this. Actually, this is going to be pretty low because they get a point for the feeding guide, a point for the life stage, then they lose 1, 2, points on the uh, feeding trial on the grain free and they get another point on the raw so that brings them up to a one two three lose it on the protein four five lose it there six so it's only going to score a six out of ten so i'm not really sure especially because i've never really been really heard of this coloration in brown dogs so i'm not really sure um and I, you know it doesn't even really interest me to ask customer service why they listed it like that but i kind of just want to know from a their reasoning standpoint why they did it but it, the food to me is it doesn't meet the cut so I really don't normally wouldn't have the desire to really research that any further but you know we have some time and just got quite a bit of battery left so let's just let's see if the chat is going to work today some days it works and some days it doesn't so I had questions about the white and brown lines do you have any studies to show the white reduces the staining? Or is it just theoretical? And for the brown, what did the percentages mean in the ingredient list? They did do studies. Okay, we're gonna check those out. Okay, let's see if she has any um, information. Let's see if she has any information on the the brown. Okay, so she's just clarifying um, what, what we already knew. The percentage on ingredient list for pet and for human foods are by weight. This means the ingredients are listed in descending order of their weight from the heaviest to the lightest as they are added to the recipe before cooking or processing. So thank you. Okay, so the link that she sent, the first link that she sent said to go to the page that we we're already on, scroll all the way down to the bottom and they list all the articles. Um, I have not read these articles. Um, they are from various years, 93, 2004, 2018, 2002, 2001. So they vary in, in, in year. Um, it says that these are scientific, scientific studies supporting the rationale behind the formula. So they're not actually stating whether or not um, their formulas perform you know, the way that they're suggesting that they do in this particular um, this particular article, she did She did send me another one. It's just saying this is the rationale of, of why they have done the things that they have done in those two diets. So it's talking about the tyrosine. It's talking about um, the phenylalanine and, um, you know, how that interacts with melanin deposits and things like that. So if you, if you know, if that is something that interests you, again, I was not that interested in it because I didn't, at least in the brown, didn't it didn't really perform so stellar that that, that would, the color of the hair coat, is cosmetic and so to me I still want the nutrients to be there enough that it was two foods that were scoring you know very good and one made the hair look nice and pretty and the other one didn't well then obviously that's a determining factor but the brown just scored um so poorly I don't I don't know that I care to read through those but let's check the other oh wow here's some photos oh wow She's super helpful. Let's look at this study and then we're gonna look at the photos. So this is from the um, Journal of Applied Animal Nutrition. It was um, published in, it looks like 2017. Let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna breeze through this. If you guys find this interesting and you want me to do a full 
journal evaluations and um, reading and understanding scientific papers is honestly a course on its own. You, when you go to college, you actually take courses in understanding how to interpret a scientific paper. It is not as simple as you just read it and you know skip to the results and the conclusion and you know bada boom bada bing you're there. Um, so we can do that. I'm not going to do that. I was not anticipating her providing me all this information. We're not going to do that in this model. We're just going to breeze through it. So this um, study was 26 healthy Swiss white shepherd dogs, 11 male, 15 female, um, between two and eight years of age, and they recruited them from five breeders across France. Okay, so that's who was included in the study. Um, one group of dogs was fed exclusively on the control diet and the other group exclusively on the test diet. The, the nature of the two diets was blinded and so the, breed, the breeders didn't know. The color assessment of the dog's coat was performed using a specto, spectrophotometer. So they use an actual device. I love that. I don't like it when it's a subjective, um, subjective where they just, you know, owner's responses or, um, you know, light, maybe the lighting was different things and that they can skew it. So I love it when they use a scientific means of measurement. So they did that. So I'm happy with that. Um, okay. So conclusions. Swiss white shepherd dogs maintained for four months on a diet um, consisting of 3.02 grams of the MCAL PHE. I don't remember what the exact name of that was because I'm learning with you guys. And tyrosine at the 8.93 um, parts per million of copper showed reduced levels of off white discoloration in their hair coat manifested as a significant reduction in the red parameter at the lab. A similar change in pigmentation was not observed in the fed control diet. Okay, so it's saying here, when looking at the data from the four sites individually, no dietary difference could be detected at either two or four months of feeding. However, after four months, a significant overall reduction in a parameter A star was detected, um, p-value less than um, 0 0.2, indicating a reduction in the amount of red coloration in the hair coat of dogs fed the test diet. So they are saying um, that there was a statistical significance. And so we're not going to get into that anymore um, because that's getting to be a little bit more probably than what this channel at least this um, baseline, you know, approach, introductory approach is. So what you guys need to know, take take home from this is, yes, they did studies on the, it doesn't say that it was this diet specifically. It should be in the methods if it was this diet specifically. Uh, I'm going to do a search, uh, word search here on the page just to see if they specifically say they fed that they fed these farming or they're just saying that their diet mimics the percentages in this diet. Um, let's see, find. Yeah, they don't specifically mention the Farmina. They don't specifically mention that Farmina was the test diet, um, but um, I think that they are, at least Farmina is saying that that is the diet that is either mimicking that or that's, you know, that's what they're using. He says, she says, here is one specific study that is linked to the NND wipe that reduces staining. So it's, it's linked somehow. Let's look at the pictures. Let's do that. There's the brown. So he's got a little bit of whiteness there. Yeah, you can't really say. You know, that could be the light coming in from the back on those three pictures. That's why I like that they use that spectrophotometer um, for the studies because that's not subjective. But the white dogs, goodness. Now that, that's, that's, that's plain. I mean, you can see that. That to that, that to that. There's no question there. So take home message. Yes, there is some research to substantiate what they've done with the diet. Um, yes, there was a paper that showed statistical significance um, for the percentages, and it didn't really say in there that they used Farmina, but um, either the formula is the same or they did use it. That was not clear to me in that study. Photos, I wasn't super impressed with the brown. Again, ee, but the white, the white is impressive. So, so there you go. That is the Farmina nnd white and brown analysis i hope you guys enjoy like and subscribe we're going to continue on our journey so hopefully you'll hang out again with me um, next week and you know we're going to be sprinkling these in here and there until we complete the series so be sure to like and subscribe and i will hang out again with you guys real soon